either we need to run the lead master really low or use more conservative settings which obviously makes the amp sound bad I'm gonna just power it off for now so what's happening? help from a fellow boogie fan and owner I just received this reissue and obviously as a tech my first job was to open it up and inspect everything and I'll be doing a full analysis of the amp how they did the reissue potential problems pitfalls and I found something really interesting that will be pretty helpful for the guys that uh, have the oscillation problem I'm gonna use the settings that Paul Azzi, I hope I pronounced the name correctly, his first video when the amp came out, he showed these settings or similar settings and the amp started oscillating. It doesn't have anything to do with actual master volume or loudness of the amp. The oscillation is happening inside the preamp. It's not a volume issue or a feedback issue. Pretty high settings on the lead channel uh, result in a uh, pretty bad oscillation but I think I found the culprit and here I just want to say huge thanks to Adrian Aguare, Aguire I'm sorry for probably mispronouncing your name and yeah he's a fellow member of the boogie group and he just sent me his uh, reissue to inspect and see what the problem is and paint a better picture of uh, what's happening with the reissue so yeah Adrian just know you're helping a lot of people, including me, and huge thanks to that. And since the amp comes from the US on American voltages like 120, 115, and I'm in Europe on 230 mains voltage, I'm running a Variac and dropping down the voltage to 115 or 120. But yeah, uh, let me just plug my Variac. When I first tested the amp, it was open. I couldn't actually make it oscillate. Whatever I did, it just stayed stable enough so yeah let's bring the voltage up we get 90 volts let's get to 100 115 yeah let's keep it at that so my master is at zero now and let's take it off standby now with pulse settings we should be getting oscillation right about now but no you hear the noise coming from the cab. This is a 412 cab, so the noise should be coming pretty loud. Uh, yeah, let's max everything out. The treble is pulled, the bass is pulled, the deep is pulled, we're on the lead, and we have uh, the pull right. So, yeah, let's max everything out. No oscillation, no oscillation whatsoever. So, let's Pull the voltage down, turn off everything, and I'm gonna show you what happens when you put it back in the head shell. Okay, so the amp is back in the head shell, everything is plugged in as normal. Now I'm just gonna lower back the settings where Paul uh, last showed his amp oscillating. So back to the Variac. Let's make sure we are not putting too much voltage. 15 or so okay again the masters at zero you can hear the amp oscillating physically oscillating from the preamp not through the speakers and now I'm gonna just raise the master to uh, make sure there's no oscillation either we need to run the master really the lead master really low or use more conservative settings which obviously makes the amp 
sound bad. So So yeah, I'm going to just power it off for now. So what's happening? Why are we getting oscillation when the amp is in the head shell? And why are we getting no oscillation when the chassis is out of the head shell? First, I need to turn the amp around and let's keep those settings as we know they are oscillating. Again, just to show, we have oscillation. Let me just power off the amp. I need to remove one of the tubes for easier access. So here I'm just unplugging the reverb cables. Here they are. I'm gonna put them like this so they don't melt on the tubes. So yeah, now the reverb is unplugged. Let me just put back the tube. And by the way, I'm running all Softex. Uh, all around the preamp, there are Softec 7025 and new Softec uh, 606 GC tubes for the power. And now, remember, I haven't changed anything on the front panel. And let's now plug it in and listen to this. No oscillation. The amp is good. And I'm just going to bring the volume up. I'm gonna bring the gain, the volume to max, the treble at max, no oscillation. So yeah, now if I just put the reverb back in. Black cable is on the right, white cable is on the left. Put back the tube in. And by the way, the reverb is set at zero, the presence at four. And let me raise the gain again. And here we have oscillation, pretty obvious oscillation. So yeah, I'm gonna bring the chassis out again, render the amp safe, and I'm gonna show you what's happening. So now, as most of you know, the original Reverb Equip amps, uh, 2C Plus amps, uh, have shared duties between the two of the 12AX7 tubes. Let me just backtrack a little. This is the input stage, uh, V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5. This is the input stage. This is basically the master stage or the effect loop, send return and the output of the preamp before it hits the, the GQ. Then we have V3 and V4 which have the split duties, uh, more on that in a bit, and V5 is the phase inverter. So the weird thing about the reverb equipped 2C pluses back in the day, half of the tube of V3 powers the reverb. The second half of that same tube is the first section of the lead circuit. Then that feeds into the first part of the V4 tube. And then the other side of that same tube, the B side, powers the reverb output. So essentially you have one part of the tube powering the reverb, then going back into the second part of the other tube. And the lead circuit, the distortion, comes from those two sections of the V3 and V4 tubes. This was not an issue with the original design. For instance, the Mark IV B revision, the later revision, also has uh, the split duties between, uh, uh, between the two tubes. And there's no issue with those amps. I'm still not sure what's the actual cause for this problem, but it's probably the close proximity of the cabling, since those two are the change jacks that the signal goes out to the reverb tank and back from the reverb tank, and the proximity of the actual reverb transformer that's just below here. Or maybe it's something in the shielding, but most likely it's just the layout. So I'm gonna look for 
some kind of a permanent solution just because this is not acceptable in my opinion. Probably most of you already seen one of Randall Smith's uh, later videos where he mentioned that the first revision of the board that he was uh, sanctioned to design for the reissue wasn't stable. And in the tech world or tech terms, uh, when we say an amp is not stable, we mean exactly that, that is actually oscillating uh, either in the low frequency, sometimes called motor boating, or high frequency uh, oscillation, like we've seen in the ratio. And he also mentioned that he was fired right after he designed that first revision of that board. So they probably never revised it and didn't look for a solution or just didn't care. And then just went with the first design. And in my opinion, if he was still there or he was uh, calling the shots, this would never happen. And he wouldn't let this uh, go out the door. So, yeah, this is pretty unacceptable to me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna work to find a solution so you don't have to unplug your reverb tank every time you want to use more aggressive settings on the amp. I'm gonna follow up with a few videos. Uh, I just received the amp, so I basically spent, what, maybe six hours with it, playing, inspecting, tracing everything. So uh, it's still in the fuck around and find out phase. And yeah, more videos from the reissue coming soon. See you and happy chugging. Thank you.